Hello friends, so welcome to another video. Friends, in this video, we will be seeing what is the meaning of uh, IoT, that is Internet of Things, and how does it work in a real life. So friends, let's see uh, what is the actual meaning of the IoT. So in this diagram, we can see there are multiple icons and multiple types of devices which are being shown. So let's just see like what does exactly mean by IoT and how all of these devices play an important role into the Internet of Things. So basically the term IoT or Internet of Things, uh, this refers to a collective network of a connected devices and the technology which facilitates this communication between devices and the cloud devices. Also the devices itself. So as we can see in this diagram, we can see there is a motorbike, there is a JCB, there is a CCTV camera. Then we have the computer devices or we have the laptops or we have the uh, mobile phone devices, right? So all of these devices are in a way part of the IoT. So and also the part of the IoT is the connectivity which these devices use for connecting to the various internet service providers or the internet cloud. So basically as the computer chips become more and more inexpensive and also as they become smaller in size, uh, it helped in growth of the IoT. Also the improvement in the bandwidth of telecommunication uh, due to which we now will have billions of devices which are connected over the internet. So what this means is everyday devices like washing machines, vacuum cleaners, cars and machines, any machine which can basically use sensors to collect the data and respond intelligently to the user could be considered as a part of the Internet of Things that is IoT. So friends, the Internet of Things integrates everyday things with the Internet. So the name itself suggests, right, it is the Internet of Things. Things means here basically all the devices which can be used for various types of communications. Also, we know that computer engineers have been adding sensors and multiple types of processors to everyday object since a very old time, like since 90s, these kind of things have been happening. However, the progress was initially slow because the chips were big and very bulky in nature. So it was difficult to fit all of these objects into the uh, small size everyday use devices. Right, so suppose I want to make a, a microwave oven as a smart device which can connect to the internet uh, for various types of communications. So first, the chips should be small enough in size so that the oven functionality is not impacted. Right, and in older days that was not the case. So it was difficult to uh, incorporate these kind of technologies into the day-to-day -day, uh, use, day-to-day -day used objects basically. So as we also know that low power computer chips which are known as RFID tags and those were first being used to track inexpensive equipment. So we can see these kind of things in current scenarios also where uh, you would see that if you go to the shopping malls or if you go to any kind of a, a shopping market right there will be multiple uh, objects which will have the tags attached to it. Now what these tags basically do is they will be communicating with the nearby receivers which are installed inside the mall itself. So if somebody tries to take the thing outside of the mall, which is having that RFID tag, then there will be the increase in the distance and the receivers will not get the signal from those RFID tags and it will kind of a ring a security buzzer. So these kind of things have been happening and over the time as the computing devices shrank in size, these uh, smart chips also become smaller they also become the faster in processing right nowadays they have very fast processing chips and also these devices become smarter over time so they were used to perform multiple types of computations in a very small time so that actually you helped in the growth of the internet of things also friends uh, the cost of integrating the computing power into small objects uh, now it has been dropped considerably because due to the uh, larger production uh, capacities of uh, various organizations, the overall size of the production of these objects like processors or any kind of small chips is now very small and it is possible to incorporate these things into the uh, day-to-day use objects. So basically uh, the motto here is 
the day to day object things are not that costly right so if you go to uh, buy a microwave oven or if you go to buy a uh, say any kind of a juicer or any kind of a electron electronic objects it might not be that costly so the processors which were fitting inside these objects for the smart communication like connecting over the internet etc should not result in increase of these objects by a very huge margin right so if i fit a kind of a smart chips inside a toaster it should not make that toaster so costly that nobody will be able to offer that right so due to the computing power and objects and processors now being cheaper in cost and uh, basically smaller in size it helped entire industry to grow and it helped that industry on to the focus so that our homes can or businesses or offices can be installed with a lot of iot devices now these smart objects can automatically transmit the data they can connect to the internet they can transmit the data to the internet also they are capable of resuming i mean receiving the data from the internet and resuming their functionalities based on the data which is received from the internet so all of these invis invisible computing devices and the technologies which are associated with that with these devices is known as the internet of things in this picture we can see that let's take example of this uh, fridge so we can have kind of a smart fridge and these are currently also present in the market where there could be some sensors placed inside a fridge which can detect the presence or absence of a certain material let's take example of say milk right so suppose the milk has been finished uh, from the fridge right so there could be a sensor which can actually detect the absence of milk and it kind of sent a kind of a notification to your mobile phone that okay milk is finished so please buy some milk or order some milk and put it in so this will be kind of a communication so if you have forgot that okay you are the milk is finished and when you go back if you want to have a nice cup of coffee the touch of milk should be present right so for that these things will be useful or say let's take example of a toaster if you are toasting something right and if you are if you get stuck in some other work like office work or office call and if you have placed something inside a toaster and if you set a timer once the timer has crossed that toaster can send you a message okay the breads are now toasted you can go back and have your breakfast something of this sort of things will be very useful to our day to day life and that is the beauty of this internet of things because it will help in the real life scenarios and it will make our lives more easier so friends let's now see how the iot actually work so basically typical iot system will be working through real time collection of the data and exchange of the data so basically an iot system can have three components the so first important component is a smart device right so it is any kind of a normal device like a washing machine television or a security camera or exercise equipment that has been given a computing capabilities and a connectivity capability so for example if we see here something in the diagram so let's consider the uh, our vehicle right or a car which we drive or any kind of equipment which we are using at our home the device itself should be smart i mean it should have the capability to collect the various kind of data from its uh, own internal systems and it should have the capability to do kind of a basic processing and also it should be able to connect to the internet so that that data can be sent over the internet and the further processing can be done so having a smart device is, is a kind of a basic requirement in the iot because day to day life things which we use if those have the smart capability then only they will be able to communicate with the internet and have that kind of a processing done now what smart device will basically do is it will collect data from its environment also it can take the user inputs or it can collect the usage patterns based on the programming done inside it and it will be able to communicate that data over the internet it will communicate it to the iot applic application and whatever response it receives back from the iot application that also will be received from that by that device and it will be able to process it also it should be able to take some kind of a 
necessary action you right so suppose for example if there is a increase in the uh, need of the power at our houses then our smart house can send some kind of a message so the uh, to the energy agent and that energy agent can do some kind of a processing further and it should be able to supply the additional energy to the houses all of these will be kind of automation and the devices should be take should be able to take the decisions by themselves so one of the important part is having the smart devices so friends let's now see what is another part of the iot system another part is the iot application basically iot application is a collection of uh, services and softwares that will be integrating the data received from various iot devices right so like we have our mobile phone various softwares right so all of the softwares what basically they are doing is they will be consuming data from some other system they will do the processing and they will give us a necessary output right so similar thing can happen in case of iot also so there should be some iot application so it could be any kind of a android ios or any kind of application which can be installed over a mobile or other communicating devices also so what that application should be able to do is it should be able to receive the data from various iot devices and it should be able to do the processing of the data which is received right so iot applications what those can do is those can use the various machine learning algorithms or various artificial intelligence technologies to analyze the data which is received from the iot devices and to make a informed decisions so all of us know that machine learning is kind of a automation technology uh, which i mean it's not exactly automation technology but it's kind of a algorithm learning where we, we basically train machines to learn by themselves to process a lot of data and to find the pattern into the data and then take the decisions by themselves and similar is also called as artificial intelligence right so just like our human brain what our human brain basically does is over the time as we grow right it will be noticing and it will be basically observing various experiences which we get in our life from childhood it will store that information into our brain neuron system and then while learning the various scenarios it should be it will be able to make the various decisions so we also know that when something happens for the first time right we how do we decide how do we decide that certain action needs to be taken so it will be basically based on the data or based on the past experiences which we have and even if we haven't seen the exact scenario or exact situation before we will have something similar which we will be able to decide and based on that our actions will be dependent right or also it could be some kind of a creative decision which we might take so all of these will be considered as artificial intelligence or machine learning so our applications are not that smart yet however over the time those will become smarter right now if the application takes any kind of a decision these decisions will be communicated back to the iot devices and iot devices will receive those notifications and those should be able to respond intelligently to the inputs which has been sent by the iot applications so iot application will be one of the important block because it will be kind of a doing the computation and it will be taking the further decisions for the iot system friends let's see now what is the next part of our iot system another important part is a graphical user interface so it's kind of a it's kind of a part of iot application only uh, it's just a gui where a user will be interact able to interact with the application to take the various decisions right so suppose if you want to take a certain action or if you want to send a certain message back to the your home devices or any kind of a iot devices then you will be able to log into the graphical user interface and you will be able to take the necessary actions which which are needed right so common example will be mobile application right which we have a gui where we can connect to the internet and we can take the decisions as per need or any website which can which we can use to register uh, and control the smart devices so this will be the graphical user interface it's a very useful thing and it's a important thing uh, 
uh, and it's one of the important part of the IoT system. So friends, let's now see some of the examples of the IoT devices. So as we can see in the picture, one of the important example could be connected cars, right? So many vehicles such as cars or any kind of a transport vehicle that can be easily connected to the internet because and it has been happening since very long in recent times where we have the multiple cars like Tesla etc which are heavily dependent on the artificial intelligence and machine learning kind of a things. So to start when it actually started like the thought was basically we can have the smart dash cams any kind of input environment system or even vehicles connected gateway uh, which will be installed into the car these can collect the data from the accelerometer brakes speedometer odometer wheels or fuel tanks to monitor both the driver performance and the vehicle health and connected car could have a various range of uses as we currently observe we can observe the use of the rental car fleets to increase the fuel efficiency and reduce the associated cost etc also, in case of unfortunate scenario where the crash has happened or any kind of a unfortunate scenario has happened, it can be used for automatically notifying the friends and family in such kind of a drastic scenarios. Also, it can be used to communicate with nearby healthcare systems and the necessary decisions can be taken. Also, it can be used for predicting and preventing the vehicle maintenance needs. So generally what happens is cars will have multiple internal parts and nobody will be able to monitor it on a regular basis by visiting the mechanic or visiting the uh, showroom shops right or service centers so it will be very useful to have some kind of a sensor fitted inside the car which can be used for predicting and preventing a maintenance need so suppose any vehicle part if it is coming to maintenance state then Rather than waiting for that part being entirely useless and resulting in the breakage of a car, it can be in advance we can visit the service center and that can be replaced. So this is one of the important and one of the very common example which we can see nowadays around us, uh, which is kind of an IoT uh, device example. So friends, let's now see another example of the IoT system. It's a very interesting uh, example. So it's basically connected homes, right? Nowadays, uh, there is a concept of smart home devices and these are mainly focused on improving the efficiency and safety of the house as well as improving the home networking. So basically what connected homes uh, means is you will have a lot of day-to-day -day use devices. Now that will become a smart Kind of a devices so let's take example of the washing machine or your infotainment system or your pc is already kind of a smart or some, we nowadays everyone has a mobile devices right so just extending that concept further our day-to-day -day use devices like refrigerator etc also can have a uh, logic installed into them and those also can connect to the internet and uh, those also can be very useful in multiple uh, scenarios basically so that is uh, one of the part of the smart home uh, uh, devices systems so another example could be the uh, smart outlet for monitoring the electricity usage right and also a thermostat which can provide a better temperature control right so if we install a kind of a system which can observe the temperature outside and based on that it can automatically adjust its either cooling or heating of the house uh, houses basically so it will prevent the electricity usage and it will also result in energy saving like also like a hydrophonic system which can use iot sensors to manage the gardens right uh, suppose uh, if it's already uh, having a high temperature outside then we can have the sensors installed which can basically Kind of a trigger the uh, sprinkling of water or something of that sort right also we can have a smoke detectors which can detect tobacco smoke uh, and kind of a buzzering etc also any kind of a fire alarm system so i think that is a very very common uh, uh, use today so we will have a smart fire alarm systems and whenever it detects any kind of a smoke it will be able to ring alarm but that is actually useful only in case you are inside the house 
right? Suppose if you have locked the house and you have went outside, right? And if something catches a fire inside and it produces a smoke, even if rings the buzzer, if the door is locked from outside, nobody would be able to get inside the door, right? In that case, if we have kind of a smart system installed in our house, then immediately message can also be sent to the owner that something seems to be wrong in the house. There is an alarm ringing. So we can immediately return back to the to our place and take the necessary action, right? Also, in case of fire, we, um, while we are on the way, we can also call the fire extinguishing systems or the fire brigade, basically. So any other, there are multiple other uses like home security systems, like door locks, if some breach happens in our security system, right? Then also we can instantly get a message and we can immediately contact the security uh, enforcement systems, etc. Right? So also, so this is also one of the example of the IoT devices. So one of the other systems could be like automatically turning off any device which is not being used, right? Suppose sometimes we forget to switch off our uh, lights uh, or switch off our cooling system, switch off our fans, right? So if we detect that, then also we can switch on or switch off it remotely. So that is again one of the uh, use. Again, rental property management, suppose we have rented our house or we have rented our office space, right? Then we can use this kind of a technologies uh, to maintain it from a remote location. Also, another very useful example is like finding a misplaced keys, etc. So those keys can have a tags, wallets can have a tags, right? And it can continuously be in communicate, communication with our mobile phones, right? So we'll exactly know the locations, something of that sort. Also like automating daily tasks like vacuuming, making coffee, etc. So everything of these sort can be uh, part of the connected homes. Also from the health perspective, also it will be very useful. So friends, this is what uh, a smart home will kind of look like. So in the picture here we can see uh, say there is a infotainment system there is a television which is able to connect to the internet and it's kind of a smart device and we have the electricity bulbs right those also can have logic installed into them so we can have kind of a sensors uh, which can detect if there is anybody presence in the house or not if we have somebody in the house then only the lights will be switched on otherwise those could be switched off then there's a temperature monitoring system, right? So if the outside temperature is very low, then it can result into the, I mean, our heating system will be automatically switched on. And if the temperature outside becomes uh, high, then we can switch it to the cooling system. Something of this sort, it will be kind of a smart home. system. So friends, another example is the kind of an irrigation system. So suppose we have the greenhouse system. And in greenhouse, as we know, we need to maintain a temperature to a very precise level. Uh, so we can use the IoT uh, logic in this case also. So suppose uh, if you want to kind of uh, switch switch on or switch off some lights inside the greenhouse, or if you want to uh, kind of uh, switch on fans or any kind of a system, which are mechanical systems, then we can have the system installed in such a way that we will have the sensors and actuators which can control multiple uh, switch gear uh, components and uh, that will be sensors will be in a way connected to the connection gateway so it could be the internet uh, connection which can be used that connection will be connected to the remote command center so it will be basically located onto the cloud uh, then we can have the another system which is our computer system it can have the monitor display it can connect to the internet uh, and some person or operator can have this monitor being observed continuously so that he can take the decisions accordingly. And also we can have the smartphone uh, which can be used as a remote control while we are on the move. right? So we can send multiple kind of a commands from our smartphone. It can connect to the connection gateway. It can in turn connect to the remote commands and then the necessary actions can be taken using the multiple switches. This is another example of the IoT systems uh, which can be used for the processing of Internet of Things. So friends, let's now see what is uh, what are different IoT technologies. So friends, uh, technologies which are used in IoT systems, those can include edge computing. So edge computing means the technology 
that can make smart devices to do more than just send or receive data to their IoT platform. So basically, let's take uh, let's take example of the any system, uh, say smart fridge or a smart washing machine or anything of that sort. So if we can somehow increase the intelligence in our our smart devices itself so that these devices can do some kind of a basic computation and they can do some basic decision making right so it will be kind of a self-sufficient so what will happen is instead of sending all the data to the cloud or to the processing engine the smart device itself can do some kind of a processing or computing and the refined data can be sent to the decision decision making uh, system right so for example if we have the uh, say a smart refrigerator right and suppose it is it is uh, collecting the data of the temperature for every one minute right so there are two options either this fridge can send this data to the computing engine uh, after every one minute it has collected or what it can do is it can store the data in itself in, in, in its own memory and it can do some processing so that it can take average of say over the one hour or over two hours and it can send that average value to the computing engine. If our edge devices itself become the smart devices, then it will increase the computing power of the IoT network at the edge and it will be reducing the communication latency and it will also improve the response time so whenever the refined data is sent to the say to the cloud or to the say uh, edge processing engines those will have to compute less data and the decisions can be taken in a smaller duration so this is one of the type of iot technologies where we improve the edge computing capacity of our smart devices another IoT technology could be the cloud computing technology. So we all know how the cloud computing systems work, right? So you will have the data centers which are having very high uh, capacity of internet connectivity. And basically those will allow other client devices to connect to the internet. And from the internet, we can connect to our data center and we can access the various services from various cloud platforms, right? So basically cloud technology is used for remote data storage and it can also be used for IoT devices management. What that will do is it will help bring the data available or accessible to multiple devices in the network. Right? So that will be one of the improvement in the IoT technology uh, to use the cloud computing. So here what we can see is say there are multiple IoT sensors right, which we can use for the uh, collection of various data. So this is one kind of IoT sensor and again say this is a different type of IoT sensor, right? These sensors can collect multiple types of data and these, that data can be then transferred to our cloud server, right? And then what that cloud server can do, it can have the various processing engines which can do the processing of that uh, data which has been received from the sensors and then that data can be in turn sent to the uh, cloud computing client devices so it can be sent to various computing uh, devices like computer systems or it can be sent to mobiles and other way around so also can be uh, done so client devices can some kind of instructions uh, to uh, to the cloud over the internet and from there those instructions can be sent back to the iot devices for taking the decision so this is again one of the kind of a use case of a iot technology where cloud computing will help actually in improving the IoT technology so that from any part of the world you will be able to access or kind of a, have the information related to the sensors which you are using for your specific purposes. So friends, another kind of IoT technology could be machine learning. So machine learning generally refers to the software algorithms uh, used to process the data and make the real-time decisions based on the data received right these machine learning algorithms can be deployed in the cloud or those can be deployed at the edge now let's take example of uh, something which is known as uh, say variables right we have various smart watches uh, which are very common nowadays what these variables do is these will have multiple sensors uh, into installed into them 
also they will be able to connect to the internet they can interface with your smartphones your laptops right they can collect the various types of data that data if it needs a kind of a complex kind of computation can be sent over the internet and over the internet we can have the multiple iot systems or iot algorithms mentioned uh, which can also use a machine learning or artificial intelligence that can kind of a gather that data it can process it using the predefined algorithms and it can send back the response to the uh, user basically so this could be one of the very useful thing uh, like variables nowadays are able to do the health monitoring they can do the kind of a syncing of the data like phone calls or any kind of a things right again that is one of the useful case another could be the industrial automation so any industry uh, which is heavily dependent on the machines right so they can use some kind of automation where they gather the data over the time like wear and tear of their equipments or any kind of infrastructure which they are using so that data can be sent to the cloud where there could be the artificial intelligence engines or iot technology algorithms written they can monitor the data received and it can send back the necessary alarms or necessary kind of a notifications to the users or organization owners right so that multiple types of maintenance or any kind of organizing of data or any kind of organizing of the raw materials can be done another useful case is the healthcare so healthcare is also another important system so various hospitals will have the various automated devices uh, which can do the health monitoring of the patients that data again can be sent to the internet and again there could be some kind of a logic return or monitoring done so we can have the various kind of uh, deduction deductions done from the data received over a longer time right again one of the very useful example could be the smart city right so any kind of a smart city it will have multiple infra level things right so again the data collection can be done like peak traffic over time like what are the temperatures what is the air index etc everything can be collected that data can be fed back to the algorithm systems and they can do the monitoring and the necessary decisions could be taken smart retail is again one of the kind of a system where we can do the uh, automation in various uh, retail devices or retail stores right so any kind of a demand of the objects or any kind of a costing related stuff collection of the or uh, raw material uh, note down etc can be done uh, with the various iot sensors so again like we can have the algorithm predefined for these kind of uses and the decisions can be taken again one of the useful thing could be the agriculture uh, related stuff uh, so that we can have the various sensors installed in our farms or in our uh, uh, fields and that can collect the like a sample of the soil or temperature water uh, humidity level from the air then uh, mineral content of the water everything can be collected that can be sent to internet by sensors and we can take the decisions based on the data received again we uh, saw the example of the smart car previously so nowadays there are self driving cars also like tesla tesla car so basically these cars collect a lot of kind of data uh, because based on data only their decision making has been uh, done so that data can be collected that data can be sent to the internet for processing of that data uh, we can have multiple artificial intelligence intelligent systems algorithms running uh, so that uh, basically fuel economy battery health all these kind of things can be done by using the machine learning so again machine learning could be one of the type of the iot technologies which can be used so friend that was a very high level uh, discussion related to iot technologies thanks for watching this video thank you